All radical reactions start with an initiation step. This is where the radicals are formed by the homolytic cleavage of a bond. In homolytic cleavage of a bond, the bond breaks and one electron goes to each one of the atoms in the bond, which is what I'm showing with these curved arrows. When you're drawing an initiation step, you wanna make sure that you're using the fishhook style curved arrow with half of an arrowhead. That is used to indicate the movement of just one single electron, as opposed to our standard curved arrow, which is what we used to indicate the movement of two electrons. So the initiation step forms the two radicals. Once the radicals have been formed, then they undergo a propagation step or a series of propagation steps. A propagation step is one where we start with a radical and we end with a radical. So these are three different types of propagation steps and we can see that they're propagation because <clears throat> we're starting with a radical reactant and we're ending with a radical product. There are, as I said, there are three different ways that propagation can take place. In this first one that we're looking at, we can see that the radical is adding itself to a pi bond. So in this mechanism, the unpaired electron from the radical will form a bond using one of the pi electrons from this particular molecule. The other pi electron from this molecule moves on to its carbon atom to form the new radical right here. Propagation steps always involve three arrows. Here's a different type of propagation step. This is one where our radical is abstracting one of the hydrogen atoms from this molecule. Based on the products, we can see that we're gonna be abstracting one of the hydrogen atoms from carbon number two. So I'm gonna draw them in just to kind of make it a little bit easier for the mechanism. Again, we need three curved arrows for this. So we're gonna be using the one electron from the radical. And then we'll be breaking one of these carbon hydrogen bonds. One of the electrons from the carbon hydrogen bond will join up with the radical to form the hydrogen chlorine bond right there. And then the other electron from this bond goes on to the carbon atom to form the radical right here. And this hydrogen um, ends up, it is over here on this molecule. I'll draw it in. This hydrogen right here ends up right there in the HCl. And then here is the third type of propagation reaction. This is one where we're actually, we see we're actually breaking a bond. Um, we're removing the chlorine from this particular radical. So this is gonna be a homolytic cleavage, the carbon chlorine bond. One electron is gonna go onto the chlorine atom to form the radical. One electron is going to go into the carbon-carbon bond with that unpaired electron that's going to be forming the, the pi bond. So those are three different types of propagation reactions. And then last but not least, we have a termination reaction. A termination reaction is when we start with two radicals and we end with no radical. And in this particular type of step, we just have the two unpaired electrons coming together to create a bond, in this case, a carbon chlorine bond. The termination reaction always involves two arrows. And let me go back up here to the top and we'll add that note for initiation also, two curved arrows. So let's look at some examples of the um, termination, propagation, and initiation reactions. And we're gonna be applying them to the reaction between chlorine and methane. First thing that we're gonna do is draw the step of the initiation of this reaction. So we're going to start with Cl2. I'm gonna write it like this. Initiated with either light or heat. I'm gonna be using light as my initiator. And this, again, this because it's an initiation reaction, we have two curved arrows. We're breaking the bond homolytically. We're forming two chlorine radicals. The next step of this reaction, it says one of the chlorine radicals that we just drew, so I'm gonna redraw it down here, abstracts a hydrogen from methane. So I wanna draw a methane molecule, and I'm drawing it all out Lewis structure-like so that I've got bonds that I can use for the mechanism. 
the products of this reaction are going to be a methyl radical. So let's go ahead and draw that methyl radical. It's going to give us an idea of what kind of curved arrows we need. And we're also going to be making HCl. This is uh, because we're starting with a radical and we're ending with a radical. This is a propagation, which means we need three curved arrows. One curved arrow from the chlorine, one curved arrow breaking the carbon hydrogen bond, which I happen to draw that on the left side. I'm going to change my mind, make this a little bit easier to draw like that. Okay, so one electron from the carbon hydrogen bond, and then the other electron from the carbon hydrogen bond goes onto the carbon atom as the, the um, one unpaired electron. After the methyl radical is formed, there are a lot of different possible reactions. Let's draw the methyl radical reacting with a chlorine radical in a termination step. And that's going to produce CH3 Cl. Termination steps have two curved arrows. So just like that, and that forms that carbon chlorine bond. Another possible reaction would be two methyl radicals reacting with each other, also termination. This would be producing ethane. Termination always has two arrows. I'm just going to condense that structure. There's the ethane. Another possible reaction would be the methyl radical reacting with Cl2. So let's draw that out. Here's our methyl radical reacting with Cl2. I want to draw the bond out to make it easier to draw the mechanism. And this says we're going to be producing CH3Cl and a Cl radical. So this is a propagation because we're starting with a radical and ending with a radical, which um, because it's propagation, we need three curved arrows. Let's take a look at exactly what we're doing. We're gonna be forming a bond between the carbon and the chlorine. So let's start with that. The unpaired electron on the carbon is gonna be reacting with one of the electrons from the chlorine-chlorine bond. The other electron from the chlorine-chlorine bond goes on to this chlorine atom to make the radical. The last thing we're going to do here is draw a bunch of steps to show the radical formation of CH2Cl2, starting with Cl2 and methane. And there's a lot of different ways that we could approach this problem. So the way that I draw it might not be the way that um, the way that you would think to draw it. It's you know it's impossible for us to know exactly what order these steps will take place. But regardless, first thing we have to do is um, initiate. So we've got to form those chlorine radicals. And it's telling us that we are going to be using methane along with the Cl2. So I think the next thing that I'm going to do is use one of the chlorine radicals and my methane to make CH3Cl. That's going to be a propagation step. So I'm going to use that chlorine unpaired electron, the carbon hydrogen, one of its electrons um, break the carbon hydrogen bond. Looks like I can't quite make this product yet. So I'm going to have H, that's going to give me HCl and a methyl radical right there. So I bonded these two together to make the HCl, and that left me with this methyl radical right here, which I then can do, I could do a termination reaction because I have this chlorine right here. So let's see, the next thing that we'll do here is a termination reaction with this one single chlorine radical. This is gonna get us halfway to where we wanna be In order to get that second chlorine on the molecule, we're going to need another set of radicals. So we're going to initiate again, same, starting back with a Cl2 molecule, make some more chlorine radicals for us to work with. And we'll use 
this guy right here, the CH3Cl. We're going to repeat this step right here to pull one of the hydrogens off of this molecule using one of the chlorine radicals. So this is going to be a propagation. I'm going to take this hydrogen down here, get those carbon-hydrogen bonding electrons, move the other one onto the chlorine to make that radical, and that is going to give me a CH2Cl radical. And we've also formed some HCl in the process. So the HCl came from these two coming together. And then this is our radical. And then we could do another termination, just like we did in this step right here. So we could take a second one of the chlorine radicals. I'm going to make it go this way. And we'll just bring those two radicals together. And that gives us the product that we're looking for, CH2Cl2.